Shalom saints, greetings this evening. We welcome you all to our live broadcast today as we are continuing the book of Revelation. Today we are taking chapter 2 and chapter 3. I believe you'll be blessed. The Bible says, blessed is he that readeth and he that heareth the words of these prophets. It's a very deep book about the prophets of our time, the unfolding of prophetic events and everyone fulfills prophecy, some in the wrong side, some in the good side. It is good for us to know the things of our time, to be like children of Issachar, we had understanding of times to know what Israel ought to do. These are the end times where pro prophecy is unfolding with such rapidity. So let's enjoy this book and feast on the book. I believe God will also reveal himself mightily to you personally as we read this book. We'll open the word of prayer. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we commit this service into your hands. May you bless us, Father. May you unfold these scriptures and the hidden manner as we get the golden pot of the manner of your word. Father, may you feed your children and give them victory over all powers of the enemy. Reveal yourself individually to each person, personal Lord, Father, as a Lord and Savior to them. Father, may you unfold your purpose and your plan, your hidden mystery in our lives. We commit this service into your hands in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome all those who are looking in. We are straight going to the book of Revelation. As I was saying in our trip there, we went to the agency to see where John was. When we, we could not go straight to the Patmos Island because it's a Greece island, we could only oversee it from the Turkish side. So um, this is not the island, but far in the mountains, the mountains that you see there, the, that's where the island of Patmos is. But this one was the uh, castle where we were, it's not the island. So as I was showing last time that we just had to go to a high spot, to a place where we could actually view we're in this palace there, in this castle, or trying to zoom and see the Isle of Patmos, which is, was just 1.4 uh, miles away from us. And, and we started uh, just zooming to see where John was when he wrote the message to the seven churches, where God was saying, he that is an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. In other words, every church age, there's something that God says. And every day in your life, there's something that God says. If you catch that, that is the mystery of your victory. So the structure of the churches, there was the name of the place which was prophetic of what was going to happen. The historical place had features that were prophetic, that were showing what God was doing in that place. Then there's also the angel, which is the messenger of that place. The salutation, God will reveal himself in line with what he's going to do in that place. For example, if he says he that is walking in the midst of the candlesticks to Ephesus, he says, if you don't repent, I will remove the candlesticks. When he reveals himself as one who has dead and is alive to Smyrna, it means they are facing death and is showing that there is resurrection. When he reveals himself as the Amen to Laodicea, it means that is the final edge. So there is the eulogy where God praises his own. And then there is also a, a, what he says that I know. I know your patience. I know your works. I know you will say that is aware of what you are passing through. There is also the diagnosis of what God says the church must straighten up and sort out. God's diagnosis follows his prescription and what he wants you to do. The condition of the age, whatever condition of the age, the overcomers will overcome in that time. No matter how, if your surrounding is, you can overcome. Then there is the rebuke where God says, straighten this. He doesn't start by rebuking people. He starts by uh, praising them. Unlike men who start by the wrong side of your life, but God starts by the good things. Then he says, nevertheless, I have somewhat against you. So Revelation chapter 2 and 3 is the church ages. It's the seven church ages from Ephesus uh, through Smyrna, through Theatera, which was dark ages, to our time that we are living in. That is the seventh age. As Enoch was the seventh from Adam, there are some who are here who shall not test death. So there is the warning that God gives. Then the counsel that he says, if you do this, things will be okay. Then the incentive. In every age, there's an, an incentive to the overcomer that he that overcometh, I will give him to it of it and manner. He that overcometh shall not be yet by a second death. He that overcometh shall walk with me in white. He that overcometh, I will give a white stone with a new name. He that overcometh shall have it and manner. He that overcometh. Shall, shall, be, shall rule with a rod of iron, I will give him the morning star. He that overcometh, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. He that overcometh shall sit with me in the throne. So there is the reward for the overcomer. And he that is an ear, it takes a special ear, the inner ear of the spirit, to hear what the spirit is saying to the churches. Then there is the judgment if you don't repent. So now we go straight to the scripture reading of today that 
These things in Revelation chapter 2, verse 1, these things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, is speaking to the first age in the days of Paul when the purity of the word had come and the lion anointing with the boldness they preached the word of God. And when he's saying he's walking in the midst of the candlesticks, it means Christ is in the midst of his church. Many times the presence of God is unrecognized. People must not come to church in a routine way, in a, but in a getting used to church, but they must come expecting and pick out the presence of God. In, in verse 2, it says, I know your works and your labor and your patience, how thou cannot bear them that are evil, and they strike them that say they are apostles, and find that they are not and they are liars. So the church, they, they will try, those who would call them themselves apostles, they will try them with a word test. Whatever you meet in life, don't believe everything. There are many spirits that are false in this age, but give it a word test. Here we're in the library there at Ephesus, walking in the Bible land. So it says, thou hast born and is patient for my name's sake, and is leopard and is not fainted. A Christian must not faint. Whatever you face, be strong. Patience is, uh, uh, with each other is love. Patience with self is hope. Patience with God is faith. So the prophet preached the message perseverance, meaning a Christian must persevere, be persistent towards the goal. When you believe something, you will make it. Faith will find its way. Whether it's crawling, whether it's singing, whether it's shouting, whatever you are, faith will find its way. Never give up when you are believing for something. So he is praising them for their labor, for their good works. Then he comes in to say, nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. This is where we as Christians must find what we are lacking um, what is the nevertheless about our, our life? What is it that we are still lacking as Christians? Let's work on that. He says, you have left your first love. The name Ephesus meant to hold fast, then also to relax. It's a compound meaning they started with high aspirations to please God, but later they were no longer careful of what God thought of them, but what men thought of them. So these seven churches, in a, they had certain characteristics within them that were prophetic. So they are characteristics of the places that God picked to, for him to prophesy what was going to happen. So this is a picture that I took. Uh, this is the video on the temple of Artemis. These are the remains of one of the, it was the, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. The temple of Diana, that was Diana of Ephesus. We went to the museum also to see the statue of Diana. They were worshipping this goddess Diana there. So that was Ephesus there. But God says, remember therefore whence thou art fallen. As Christian, when you started high, when you came to the message and you were reading and you were following every, every message and you were not missing services and you were praying and you were fasting and you were burning high in the spirit, he says, repent and do the first works or else I will come quickly and will remove thy candlesticks out of his place except you repent. God's message throughout, whether it's in the churches, whether it's in the seals, whether it's in the vials, is about repentance, that you must repent so that the plagues don't come upon you. So here is an interesting thing that he's saying, if you don't repent, I will take away the candlesticks. In other words, if you have got a God-filled pastor, filled with the Holy Ghost, you can try to hold him under your finger and say, well, if he says anything about us, we... we uh, the robbed car, if he says anything about our wearing makeup, we, we'll excommunicate him. He says, D don't you worry. God will do it before you have a chance. God, when you have God-fearing men among you, if you don't repent, God moves them. They minister in another different place. Now, repent quickly and don't hesitate. They are told to repent. And the, evidently, Ephesus hesitated because it was then destroyed uh, by, by, by earthquakes. It was the, the temple there was shapeless. And the, it was an inhabited, uh, an uninhabited land. So when I was there in the harbor street of Ephesus, I was enjoying the view there, even of the temple where Paul, um, what is that, amphitheater where Paul was when there was the uh, Demetrius, the Silvers meet. This is a 25,000 seater temple there. It says, but that, that is this, that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans. Nico means to conquer, light is the church. So this is a human hierarchy that is replacing the Holy Spirit and they are holding people. They are lords over God's heritage. He says, I hate that. So as a Christian, you must hate what God hates. You must hate the fashions that God hates. So at this age, there was the intertwining of the vines where the false vine was wiggling itself. There were two spirits within the framework of the Christian church. 
Remember, in every congregation, a, there are three kinds of believers, a true believer, a make believer, and an unbeliever. So in this Ephesian age, they had a chance and opportunity to be God's best. Uh, for a while, they prevailed, and then they relaxed. In that unguarded moment, Satan planted a seed of complete ruination. So a Christian must be aware of the unguarded moment. The devil can plant anything in that moment, always be on fire, always be on guard. So the seed of Nicolaitanism started coming in, and uh, that was the white horse rider, deception coming in the church when, uh, in, in that time. But the elect cannot be deceived. When the devil came in as the Nicolaitan spirit, it, became, it started as, a, as the deeds, then it became an unbending rule. So the Nikao means to conquer, light means the church. So this was, they would take the Holy Spirit out of the church and give it to holy men. So it was now a system that was running the church instead of the Holy Spirit. That was the white horse writer of deception. And it was now crowned um, even at uh, Pecamos when it became, that spirit was now ruling even after Nicaea Council. And the, the, the Pope is the running, uh, uh, crowned as the, uh, the, the beast takes over in that system. So we see that the spirit is warning them, saying um, in the voice there that he that has an ear, let him hear what the spirit is saying to the churches. He that overcometh, I will give him to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. The tree of life was once here on earth, but now it's a moving tree. Christ is the tree of life. Now it's in the paradise of God. And we have access. At one time, it was uh, hidden away by flaming swords of angels. But now, because Christ had to go through the swords, through the judgment for us, to pay the price for us, we now have access to the tree of life again. We now have access to eternal life. Those who believe in him shall not die, but have everlasting life. So the flaming sword... It was shit with the blood of Jesus Christ so that we have access to the tree of life. Here was at Melitus. This is the place where Paul met the, the elders of Ephesus. And he told them that after my departure, uh, there will be grievous wolves that will not spare the, the ship. This is the amphitheater of Melitus, just outside Ephesus. Paul was going to Jerusalem. He was going to be arrested there and finally die in, in Rome there when he was, after his trial. So he, he was in a hurry, but he told he had to give time to the elders. And he says, even among you, they shall rise grievous hooves. He warned them. He says, I'm even warning you in tears. He was identifying the Antichrist spirit that was coming even in, in, in the midst within the framework of the Christian church. Just near that place when we drove back to Ephesus, there is the temple of Athena. The gods that were worshipped and they are in ruins now. They were building even on high mountains, in high places. You know, the Bible talked about the high place of this, the high place of that. This, guy, this is the temple of Athena there. But those who overcame were not deceived by anything that would come. The Bible says, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. He that overcometh, I will give him to eat of the tree of life. So we see again in Revelation 22, verse 2, the tree of life. At the side of the river of life was the tree of life. So we are restored back to what Adam lost. Back to the tree of life, back to eternal life. And it's not like we shall have eternal life, we have it already. And we are invited as believers to the water of life, to the word of life, to the tree of life, to the path of life, to the light of life, to the bread of life, to, the, to everything of life, which is Jesus Christ. So here is the, we feel the fragrance of the tree of life inviting us back to our ought to be condition. So the next in Revelation uh, chapter 2 from verse 8 is to the church of Smyrna, which means it's from Myri, which is bitterness. This is a persecuted church. It's suffering, but it's holding fast. It says, unto the angel of the church in Smyrna, write, these things say the first and last, who was dead, but is, is alive. So he died and he rose. So he's telling them that even if the devil shall persecute you and kill you, uh, you are going to rise also. You are going to have life eternal with him. I know your works and your tribulation and your poverty, but thou art rich. This is the place of Smyrna. We have, we have visited the place there. These are the ruins of the ancient city of, of Smyrna. So these people have poor poverty in the natural, but they are rich spiritual, which is the opposite of the Laodicean side, where they, are, they have wealth in the natural, but they are poor in the spiritual. There are some who have poverty in the natural, but riches in the spiritual. But there are some who are poor in both, and there are some who are rich in both. 
says, I know the blasphemy of them that say they are Jews and they are not, but they are of the synagogue of Satan. It is blasphemy to say you are a child of God if you are not. It is blasphemy to call yourself a Christian when you are just a Chechen. So these Jews, because they thought Jews were, the, the early church was mainly Jews in the first days. Um, so they thought by claiming that, they would have an upper hand in the church. So that was also signifying a church that was calling itself the mother church. And that was the blasphemous names on the beast. So I know your works and your tribulation and your poverty, but the outreach. I know the blasphemy of them that say they are Jews, but they are of the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of these things which you shall suffer. God, when he comes to his people, he removes fear. Because fear can paralyze your life. He says, fear not uh, what you shall suffer. The devil shall cast some of you into prison that you may be tried. You shall have tribulation for 10 days, but be faithful unto death. I will give you a crown of life. The 10 days were fulfilled in the time of 302 to 312 under Diocletian, a wicked empire. This is um, uh, the ruins of Smyrna there when we visited the place. And the messenger of this place was Polycarp. Polycarp, a man who was, uh, was Irenaeus, sorry. Irenaeus was the messenger of, uh, of Smyrna. And Irenaeus was a student of Polycarp. Polycarp was a student of St. John. So the messenger of this place was a ministry that was full of the supernatural was uh, Irenaeus. His churches were full of manifestations of the spirit. He never wavered from the word and they were full of the Holy Spirit. And um, the Bible says now, um, I know your works. When God is, is waking, walking in the midst of the people and seeing tribulation, people would think that he would just stem the tribulation and stop it. But God sometimes allows character building because character is not a gift, it's a victory. You must overcome in the trial of your faith, wicked patience. So he says, fear none of those things that you shall suffer. These people were fed to lions, they were persecuted, they were tormented, but they chose to die like a one by one, they chose to die like a great angelic choir singing. I can almost hear their voices say, I pledge allegiance to the king. They gave their lives to God and they died as martyrs because God had told them, fear not. Then he says, he that has an ear, let him hear what the spirit is saying to the churches. To him that overcometh, he, he shall not be hurt by second death. We know that second death is the lack of fire. A Christian is not going to the lack of fire. Unless if you let the fire of the Holy Spirit, you go to the lake of fire. But if you have the Holy Spirit, you have already passed from judgment unto life. The overcomer's reward is the crown of life. We have a crown of rejoicing. We have a crown of life. And now it says to the angel of the church in Pegamos, right. These things said he that is a sharp two-edged sword. The word of God is a two-edged sword. It cuts uh, the devil into repons, it cuts in the congregation, it cuts in the preacher, it prepares the congregation to have a holy life, it prepares the preacher to have a holy life also. It says, I know thy works and where thou dwellest, where certain seat is, and thou holdest fast my name and have not denied my faith, even in those days when Antipas, my faithful martyr, was slain among you where Satan dwells. Even if you are in an evil environment, whether it's evil at work, whether it's adverse at school, whether you are surrounded by negative circumstances, if you are a child of God, you shall overcome those circumstances because greater is he that is within you than the one in the world. He even says, even in those days when Antipas, my faithful martyr, even in the days when there is pandemics, even in the days when they are rejecting you, even in the days when times are hard, hold fast the name of Jesus. In this time, the name of Jesus was now substituted for titles, uh, but they held fast, they baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. They said, whatever we do in word and in deed, we do it in the name of Jesus Christ. If you take the name of Jesus with you, it will joy and comfort give you. It will give you victory over every sin. So this is Pecamos. This is the ancient place of Pecamos. Um, and in this place, that's where Satan sit was. But how did Satan sit move from uh, Babylon, ancient Babylon, to be in Pergamos? It was in the time when Babylon was destroyed, and then the Atalas priests ran with their sacred mysteries, and they came to Pergamos. And here we see the altar that was the Satan seat here, uh, but it was excavated by uh, German engineers and they transported it to Germany in 1930. 
at the right time for that Satan seed to inspire a dictator called Hitler to rise. So we had to go and visit the Acropolis of Pegamos. It's a very high place, 400 meters above the, the level of the town there. You see the kings who built very high so that they cannot be easily attacked. So it's a very high place. In the, upon a mountain, there's a high wall in the kingdom there. That's where in the time of Atalas III, um, he willed the kingdom to, to Rome. And then this is the place where also they worshipped uh, Escapus in form of a living serpent. Escapus was a doctor, the initial one. Then later, there was a religion of a Euskalipus, which was the worship of a living serpent. That the, the treatment rooms where people would sit under, they would take sedatives, and then they would sleep at night, then snakes would crawl over them, and they would say it would give them mysteries of their healing. A Christian must be above all serpent things, deceptions, and also you must not dream snakes and dream dirty things as a Christian. You must live above all deceptions, above all powers of the enemy. But now, this became a god that they worshipped and fed in this temple in form of a living serpent. We had to climb high there to the Acropolis of Pegamos to see where the kings of Pegamos rules. They ruled in that place. This is the ancient of the, the, the ancient kingdoms that they had. You know, every kingdom comes and, and goes, but there shall be an establishment of a kingdom that cannot be shaken, an everlasting kingdom, when the stone of Daniel shall beat all the kingdoms of this world and they disappear because we have received a kingdom that cannot be shaken. It says now, um, I have a few things against thee. He starts by praising the church. Then I have a few things against thee because you have them that hold the doctrine of Balaam. So Balaamism was materialism. Uh, there were three evil doctrines there. Nic Nicolaitanism, popularity. Balaamism, money. Jezebelism was women control, dominating female, the church that was controlling there. He says, thou hast this, that you hate the deeds of Nicolaitans, which I also hate. So in Pegamos, it became the doctrine of Nicolaitans. In, at, in the first churches there at, Smyrna, at, at Ephesus, it was the deeds. Then it became doctrine. So Nicolaitanism was a human hierarchy that was substituting the spirit of God. So we go now, um, it says, repent or else I'll come and fight against you uh, with the sword that comes from my mouth. So this Pekamos church was a compromising church. Pekamos means height or elevation. It also means thoroughly married when the church and state married. They, you must, as a Christian, don't be married with the things of the world, but be separate. He says, come out from among them and be not partakers of their sin. To him that overcometh, I'll give him to eat of hidden manna, which is the eternal partaking of the revelation of Christ. Even things that we don't understand now, we shall understand it better as the ages roll on in eternal ages to come. That is the revelation of Christ. And the, a Christian is a hidden source of strength, a hidden source of power, which is the hidden manna, the golden pot of manna, which is the word of God that we eat and gain strength, gaining new power to run the race. And I'll give him to, um, a white stone with a new name that is written that no one knows, Sefi, that re receives it. So when you overcome, there's a name change. When you overcome, the, even when Peter overcame, his name was changed. Abraham's name was changed. Sarah's name was changed. Jacob, Jacob's name was changed. Our names are changed. And that name may be the actual name that is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So they would persecute Christians. Even in the days when Antipas was martyred, they would have a bronze bull, with the, which was a furnace. And then they would, they would roast you inside. When you are screaming, they say their bull is screaming. That was a cruel system. But in that time, the, there was a, a, a saint, which was St. Martin, who was the messenger to this age. He was lived a sacrificial life, with a supernatural life, and three, more than three times the dead were raised, and God was with him, fighting his battles, and even those who wanted to kill him, they were so overcome in the fearful and holy atmosphere that they begged for mercy. At one time, he saw a beggar that was destitute, who had no, it was in a cold day, more than maybe the cold of today, he cut his coat and gave him half. Then in the dream, 
he saw that it was Christ. Whatsoever you do to the least of my brothers, that's you do unto me. Don't be weary of doing good. If you do charity, one day you, are, you will realize that you are doing it to Christ and to the angel of the church in the attire. This is the dark edges. This is the middle candlesticks. This is uh, the longest edge of about 900 years. This is the edge when Columba was the messenger. This is the edge when church was persecuted and the Bibles were being burned. These things say the Son of God, whose eyes are like a flame of fire, the flame of fire eyes, see even in the darkness. There is an eye watching you everywhere where you go, mind that caused that to pursue. So his feet like a fine brass, he has passed through the judgment for us. He has passed through the fire for, for us. These things say the Son of God. So we don't know him now after the flesh is not son of man, but is the Holy Spirit again, son of God. His eyes like a flame of fire, his feet like brass. So he is all piercing eyes, seeing everywhere. His eyes are blazed with fire of judgment. He sees the idols reverend instead of him. So here we are. These are the ruins of the ancient Theatira, right in the midst of the city there. And you remember even Lydia, the seller of paper, was from the Atira. And God opened their heart to attend to the things that Paul said. So this is the age when under the persecution, the seed fell into the ground. And unless a grain of corn falls into the ground, it abided alone. So it started sprouting again in Sardis, Lutheran movement, and in Philadelphia, Wesleyan movement, and in Laodicea, first part is Pentecostal movement, then Bright Edge under Malachi 4. So this is the edge in the attire of the black horse right, the rider, which is the dark edges, which was famine in the church and persecution of Christians. Uh, and uh, 68 million Christians uh, killed from Pagania to the attire in time when the enemy was rising against the Christians. But he says now, I know your works and your charity and your service and your faith and patience. These people are loaded. You know, one person can be loaded with such supernatural qualities that another person doesn't have. When you go to Sardis, it's a sad story. It's a sad story. They don't have any qualities to, to that God would uh, eulogize, even Laodicea. Before God worked on it through a prophetic ministry, there was nothing that could be read. But here is people who are under persecution. People who are persecuted, who are being killed and hunted out, but they are loaded with the works and charity and faith and patience. Uh, you must have all the virtues of, of God in you and thy works, and they last to be more than the first. So unlike Ephesus, that they, they were going uh, losing their first love, but these people with their attire, they were the cream of the crop because they kept increasing. The more they were persecuted, the more they prayed. The more you face challenges, the more you pray. The more you face obstacles, the more you pray. Raise your standard, raise your levels. The more the devil rises like a flood, the Spirit of God raises a standard. So, and uh, he says, uh, notwithstanding, you know, God, even if he has good things that he has seen, he will not fail to rebuke you for the bad, because those that he loves, he rebukes and chastens. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, Thou suffered that woman Jezebel, which caused us of a prophetess to teach and to seduce my servants, to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed to idols. I gave her a space to repent of her fornications. You know, even Jezebel had a space to repent. God, it doesn't matter what you have done in your life. You are not as evil as Jezebel. She was given a space to repent. Even if you have fornicated, even if you have aborted, even if you have killed, there is a chance for you today. He says, come unto me. All those who labor in the heavy light, and I'll give you rest. Come, though your sins are as red as crimson, they shall be white. You shall be washed in the high soap, whiter than the snow. He says, um, behold, I will cast you into a bed, and those that commit adultery with you into great tribulation, except they repent. You see, even when plagues are falling, he says, they repented not. Even in the times of the trumpet, even in the times of the edges, even in the times of the seals, even in our lives, whatever happens, God is saying, please repent and make right. I will kill your children with death, and that all the churches shall know that I am he that searches the reins of the heart, and I will give every man according to your works. So this woman, Jezebel, Jezebel came into Israel uh, not by salvation, not by, induced also to by holy marriage like Ruth and um, maybe um, the uh, Rahab. But she came because 
uh, Ahab wanted to strengthen his kingdom by wrong way, and this, this woman brought idolatry. She hated the prophets of God. She hated the word of, of God. She was given here a space to repent. The same way that Elijah stood against Jezebel, the same way that John the Baptist stood against Jezebel, the prophet of the age, stands, stands against that woman Jezebel. He preaches a message there that in church ages, that woman Jezebel, as a part of the church ages there, book, that woman Jezebel, exposing the system that is idolatry, is full of mariolatry, is full of idols, it's a Catholic system, it's a, and even the children, which are denominations and Protestants, the children of this woman, because it's mystery, Babylon, the mother of harlots. There is no daughter who is born a harlot. They are born virgins, but then they deviate. In the ages when this move started, Lutheran, Wesleyan, and all denominations, they started in a virgin state, but then they deviated. But it says to the overcomers, I will give you power over nations. We are given authority as sons of God. Dominion is ours. He that overcometh and keeps my deeds, my works unto the end. It's not just being a Christian for a short time. Even in the days of Noah, there are some who joined for a short time, they gave up. Um, to, but if you hold, he that endures to the end, I will give him authority over nations. That is the millennium will rule with Christ for a thousand years. Even Christ, there, it says, he was a male child who was to rule nations with a rod of iron. In the Old Testament, it was a rod of iron. Now it's a rod of iron. We find that um, when Christ comes to take over, to establish a kingdom, in the millennium for a thousand years and then uh, blending on to new heaven and new earth and his subjects shall come to take over uh, his eyes are like a flame of fire he has a vesture dipped in blood and there's a crown of gold and the hosts of heaven follow him his name is called the word of god he comes with these people and we rule for a thousand years he that overcometh and keeps my works to the end to him i'll give him power over nations he shall rule them with a rod of iron so we don't rule Christians, but we rule unbelievers who will be there in the millennium. Uh, we follow our message on millennium. You will see uh, the mystery there in the book of Zechariah and throughout the scriptures. I will give him the morning star. Everything that God gives, it's himself. He is the bright and morning star. When he says, I'll give you heat and manna, it's himself. When he says, I'll give you a white stone, he is the rock of ages. When he says, I'll give you to, to eat of the tree of life. He is the tree of life. When he says, I will give you uh, to, to maybe the living waters, the lamb shall give them waters of life. He is the waters of life. So he that is an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So unto the angel of the church in Sardis, which is now we are in Revelation chapter 3. As we say today, we'll cover Revelation 2 and 3. So Revelation chapter 3 is three churches. Revelation chapter 2 is four churches. The first four churches up to dark ages. Then these last three churches, God separated them because now it's time of reformation and restoration. Sadis, we are now rising from the dark ages because God says, I will restore the years that the palm on the locust and caterpillar is eaten. Whatever the devil has done in your life, there is an agenda of God to restore. So to the angel of the church in Sadis, Write these things, saith he, that is seven spirits of God. It's not like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spirits of God, those burning lamps of fire, but it's like the, the seven spirits of God is the sevenfold quality of the spirit of God. And the spirit allotted in every age through the message of God in every age. And the seven stars, which are the seven messengers. I know your works, thou is a name that thou liveth, but are dead. There are some Christians that have a name that they are brothers, they are sisters, but they are dead. You just have a name that you are a good person, but what is your works? Where are you with God? What is your spiritual status with God? So the seven spirits of God we also see in Isaiah chapter 11 verse 2, spirit of God and spirit of wisdom, spirit of understanding, spirit of cancer, spirit of might, spirit of knowledge, spirit of fear of the Lord the sevenfold spirit of God. So this um, Satis church in the days of Luther is the church of the living dead. Hey, brother, it's bad for you to be in, uh, spiritually dead. There are people who are seated in the pews in church. They never miss service, but they are spiritually dead. But God 
who has the seven spirits is saying, I have the spirit that can revive you. I have the Zoe life that can fill you. If you are dead today, God can fill you with the Holy Spirit and revive your life. You can rise like the dry bones again. God has power to raise even the dry Christians. He says in verse 2 there, Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain, which are ready to die, for I have not found your words perfect before God. So it was supposed to be restoration, but it became reformation because when they escaped from something, they were now falling back to what they escaped. When you come out of something, don't go back. When you come out of your evil habits, when you come out of hedonism, when you come out of lust and things of this world, don't go back like a dog to his vomit. So their works were not perfect. There was a chance for perfect realization, but they had a partial realization. So be watchful and strengthen the things which remain, which are ready to die. Many Christians have still have some good qualities that are remaining, but you find they are dying. Prayer times are dying. Fasting is dying. All night prayer meetings is dying. Forgiveness is dying. And missionary work is dying. A, a holy life is dying. But there are things of the world that are creeping in as good things are creeping out. So be watchful and, and strengthen the things which remain. If you can still play the tabs, don't allow it to die. Let no man take your crown. If you can still pray in the spirit, if you still have the gifts of the spirit, if you still can reach out in faith, don't allow those things to die. Um, it says, remember how thou has received. You know how he received the message? How you came to the Lord. Say like Samson once more, Lord. You remember the days when you were on fire for God? When you would, Samson would remember the days when you would kill uh, 1,000 Philistines with a chop on you. Remember the days when you burned the, the fields of the Philistines. You remember the days, but now he was now broken. He was at such a st state. But God has a chance, there's a possibility for another revival. Um, remember how you received and heard and hold fast and repent. So repent while there is time. The city of, 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 um, of Sardis was known also for dying wool. And this is the place where the first coin was minted. So dying wool also was invented in this place. It is said it meant also Christ takes that characteristics of their inventions. And he says, you have stained your garments spiritual. The natural types the spiritual. This is, they were stained their garments with the paganism. When in that place, there was a big temple of, of Siberia, the, the, which was a, a temple of Artemis, the, which was paganism at, at its highest. There was, there was the altars that God was against. This huge and great temple of, of um, Artemis at at Satis, and God was standing against that. So this is the edge where after Theatira, the seed falling into the ground, started sprouting in the Lutheran movement. And the message of this edge was Martin Luther, who kept his head above fanaticism. He protested 95 theses against paganism, against Roman system, declaring that the just shall live by faith. If you are a child of God, you live by faith. His life had a lot of miraculous. At one time, he prayed for his horse that had a broken leg, and it was healed. Anointed it with oil, and it was healed. But the denunciation here, God is saying, I know your works. You have a name that you live, but are dead. There are people out moving around as dead Christians. They cannot read. They cannot overcome. There is nothing. There is no testimony in their life. There is nothing spiritual happening in their life. There is no breakthrough in their life. But escape from that situation and go to another level um, where you can overcome. So the eulogy is saying, thou has a few names even in Satis. It doesn't matter where you are. Even in South Africa, even in Zimbabwe, even in America, they are still, God has never left himself without a witness. They, we have not defiled their garment. They shall walk with me in white. God is, is white, and white is the purity. The bride has made herself ready. She has been given to be arrayed with the fine linen, which is white and clean, which is the righteousness of the saints. It's not our righteousness, but it's the Holy One transferring his holiness to us. So you must refuse to be corrupted by the world. When I'm speaking about these edges, I would recommend that you go. I preached each one in detail. So if you have not followed them, Please go and follow each one. Ephesus, I preached Ephesus, and uh, Smyrna, Pegamos, Theatira, uh, Sardis, 
Philadelphia and Laodicea. So follow them and get the full detail. So Christ is saying, he's proud of them. He says, they, they shall walk with me in white because they are worthy. The one who is worthy, Christ who is the worthy one, is saying we are worthy. We are only worthy through his worthiness. He says, I will not remove their name from the book of life. Some names can be removed. But there are some names that are written in the Lamb's Book of Life, in the Lamb's subsession of the Book of Life, that they cannot, under any circumstances, have their names removed. But I'll also show you another group whose names were recorded from, uh, 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 and will never be removed. So we cannot have our names removed. He that is an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches, to him that overcometh. There is a reward in every age. You shall walk with him in, in white. So we find that it comes now to the angel of the church in Philadelphia. Uh, when we're at Satis there, I forgot to mention that Satis means has two meanings. One of the meanings is the red ones. Satis also from a satin stone. Satin stone is red. So they were dyeing their garments. They were polluting their garments. But God says be white. So that, that is the edge of Satis. And the other meaning is escaped one, the escaped. So Philadelphia means brotherly love. You know, when there's love, there's not even one rebuke that was said there. When you are living in love, love covers a multitude of sin. God does not see any mistakes there. The, um, the, these, are the, these things say he that is holy, that is true. That holds the key of David, which open it and no man can shut, and shut it and no man can open so this key of David upon his shoulders, the government shall be upon his shoulders. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. When it opens, no man can shut. When God opens a door for you, the devils cannot shut it. No one can, can take what belongs to you. And this is your opportunity. When God opens a, jo a door of salvation, a door of victory, a door of marriage, a door of breakthroughs, a door of the miraculous, a door of unlimited favor, Nothing can shut that door. When God opens a new chapter for you, nothing can shut that chapter. But there are some evil chapters that God closes because when he closes, no man can open. So we are closing your past failures, your past mistakes, your heartaches, and your, the perilous times of your life. So here we were at the ancient Philadelphia. So he says, I'm the key of death, and uh, he has the key of death and hell. Um, do 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 you need him today? He has the key of your joy. He has the key of your happiness. He has the key of your deliverance. He has the key from the grave. He has the key of death and hell and heads to unlock the supernatural. And he can unlock also the natural. It was put on the shoulders, meaning the government, God was in control. And also in ancient cultures, they would say when the bride is married, is committed to the husband, she would take a veil and put it in the shoulder of the husband, transferring all dominion to the husband. Nothing controls our life except God. And nothing can happen by chance. God is in control in your life. And he rules in everything. But also, in another sense, again, putting the key on the shoulders, it means the head, which is Christ, he has transferred authority to the body, which is the bride. So God's church is the power that is shaking this hour. The bride is the final voice. All authority, all power in heaven is given unto us. All what was in God, he poured into Christ. And all what was in Christ, he pours into the church. So Philadelphia was 75 miles southeast of Sardis. And it was famous for one growing district. As you see, I was recording, these are vineyards all over. You, for, you move for miles it was famous for, for that. So the messenger of this age um, of Philadelphia was Wesley. This is the grave of John Wesley. When I was in UK, I went to visit the grave of John Wesley. There it is, and I was privileged to go to the deathbed of John Wesley. This is where he was, and they preserved it when he passed away. You know, it's a privilege to stand near this man because we are part of the same economy, and we are given this privilege to cause in the climax of the redemption story, what these men have walked and fought for. And it, it, this is the Museum of Methodism. And it is amazing that the room there is called the Philadelphia Room in the West because he was the messenger of Philadelphia. 
and his gospel story and stamina comes from a godly mother who was the fifth gospel who stood by principles and raised Charles Wesley and John Wesley. So now these things say that that is the Holy One. Here he stands, the Holy One, and we stand with him clothed in his righteousness and holy with his holiness. So our holiness is not our own. These things saith he that is true. Now the word true is wonderful. It's not just true as opposed to false, but it shows the perfect realization of who is. When you realize fully the potentials of this message, who God is to us, then the open door is revealed in your life. So this is the edge of the open door. He says, I've set before you an open door. So in the days of Pecamos, it was an open door of the enemy coming with seeds of discrepancy and perversion. But now it's the open door to, re to, the, to the back to the word again. But it's not an open door to power as it is in our day now, where the power of God, all the powers of God are released, equipping the believer in these last days. So a great door and effectual is opened unto me, Paul says, but there are many adversaries. When God opens a door in your life, no devil can shut it, can, can close it. But he can just have adversity for you not to be able to cross. But when you see a door open, an opportunity to open, enter it, even push away all adversity. There is an open door for you, my brother, my sister. You can overcome against all odds. And one open door opens to another. It's a door to showers of blessing. It's a door to endless possibilities. It is unlimited. What can happen in your life? So behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan. We say they are Jews and are not, but they lie. I will make them to come and worship before your feet and know that I have loved thee. When God has loved you, he wants to prove it that he has loved you. He's ready to even bankrupt heaven than for any of his promises to fail. You will make all demons to bow before you. you make your family spirits bow before you. You will make diabetes and cancers and all adversity to bow before you. You will make every burden to become a stepping stone. Now in verse 7, to the angel of the church of Philadelphia, I write, uh, it says, I know your words. Behold, I set before you an open door. Because no man can shut it because you have little strength and you have kept my word. Rather, to keep the word does not require you to be a big person. With a little strength, when you do what you can do, God will do what you can do. Do what you can do. Pray and live your holy life and shun the wrong and do the right. God will make a way for you. Because you have kept the word of my patience, I will also keep you from the hour of temptation. We shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly, uh, hold fast to what you had. Let no man take your crown. Don't allow anyone to take your position, to take your crown. If you are not doing your work, maybe you are supposed to be a missionary, you are supposed to be winning. So someone will do it and take your crown. If you don't, praise the Lord. We will praise the Lord and take the crown. Um, it says, because you have kept the word, what you keep will keep you. The message that will keep will keep you. When Job kept the word, it kept him in the hard times. When Noah kept the word, it kept him in the hard times. When Abraham kept the word, it kept him in stormy times. When Paul kept the word, it kept him in the shipwrecks of his life. There is a time of shaking when everything is shaken. But when you keep the word, you will never be shaken. Behold, I come quickly and hold fast that which you hears. Let no man take your crown. To him that overcometh, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. He shall not go out anymore. And I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of God, which is New Jerusalem, which comes from heaven and from God. I will write upon him my new name. No, everything is written all over you. There are promises written about us. We are pillars. We cannot be shaken. A pillar is not shaken because it's part of the foundation. He that is an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Be a pillar in the ministry. Be a John Charlotte. Be supportive. Be a prayer warrior. Don't be a warrior who worries. But it says now to us, which is the last age, as Enoch was the seventh from Adam, this seventh age is the rapture age. There's never been a day like this day. There's never been a light that shines so bright like this day. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, right. Laodicea means uh, people's rights. That's why people are rising with women's rights gay rights and what, but we also arise with our redemptive rights, fighting for what belongs to us as Christians. These things say the amen. That is the 
all of it that is the faithful and true witness when he says something is true and he says you are healed it's true when he says he will bless you it's true the beginning of the creation of god is the alpha and omega is everything to us um he says i know your works um he says because you say i'm rich and increased with goods and i've needed of nothing and know not that you are rest miserable uh, poor and blind and naked it's bad to be in that situation but it's worse if you don't know it it's bad to be bedridden, but it's worse if you don't know it it's bad not to have the holy spirit but it's bad if you don't know it there are some people who don't have the holy spirit but they don't know it they think they have it there are some people who are living a miserable life and they don't know it they think it's all right but when you start knowing it's the gateway to victory to overcoming what is binding you so this is a materially rich church that is spiritually poor unlike smina which is rich which is it says i know you're poor but thou art rich but these are materialistic people i would rather have jesus than all that silver and gold he says so that because you are neither hot or cold when god says you would rather be hot or cold he says because you are lukewarm i'll spew out of my mouth actually lukewarm water is one of the emetics so the church ceases to be the mouthpiece of god but the bride of christ the chosen ones they speak as oracles of god from heaven so royal ladies were given this name laodicea these are the ancient ruins of laodicea I was with my brother elio there this is the church that is boasting that it has great things and people who say uh, they are of god and no um, they say they have the spirit of god yet they are naked and blind and miserable they are already deceived and they have the wrong spirit the elect cannot be deceived it is evident who they are these are the ruins of laodicea there and christ starts speaking now that i cancel you to buy of me god tried with fire that you may be rich true riches and true investment is to lay your treasures where moth and rust cannot enter where you shall have the character of christ as gold tried in the fire you have the character you have gone through the fairness of purification by the word of god when god cancels this age that had no eulogy nothing was good in this age but he sent a prophet in this age to prepare us to raise us from blackness from ashes to be beautiful from a spiritual dead condition to bring us from bondage to freedom from amnesia to consciousness so he starts working on them he says i'll anoint your eyes with the eye self which is the holy spirit to open your eyes to the fullness of the word of god he says as many as i love i rebuke and chasten be they zealous therefore and repent when you are rebuked don't be offended if you forget and be beatitude don't be blessed is he that is not offended in me let our eyes be open to the realities of the mysteries of god of the powers of god it says behold i stand at the door and knock if any man hears my voice and open the door i will come in and sup with him and he with me so christ is outside the door as a rejected king again in laodicea but now there is a church that is open to him as the king laodicea it was taking its water from hieropolis when i went there i went to see hieropolis this is one of the theaters in hieropolis a massive theater that was a, i think it was a 10,000 seater or something um even battle of horses are here the movie was acted the last 11 minutes was were acted somewhere here so this is the beautiful hieropolis and the, this is a castle of, of, of lime and a, or, or it's, a, it's called pamukale this is a castle of lime all over the place in near just hieropolis so laodicea was destroyed by earthquakes because it shows the shaking that will come in the last days the god will shake all systems but we have received a kingdom that cannot be shaken the water supply of laodicea even you will see in the ancient system there's a water supply there it was being taken from hieropolis where they were hot streams the other supply was from Colos. we went to Colos. the paul rise to colossians it, it was called but the one which was hot from hieropolis it was arriving here as lukewarm but the one that was called from from colors to arrive here as ho as lukewarm so it will rather they were hot or cold so a christian would rather be a full-time christian or no christian at all so here are the people in the last days uh it would take a christian trained church to descend the evil from rock because there'll be a lot of carnal impersonations laodicea was exporting black hole so christ is also saying that uh, 
get white raiment, not stained garments. As a Christian, you have power of sonship. So they were, this was the royal ancient Laodicea. When they called it the metropolis, they were looking forward to a one world government that was going to prevail. They were looking for a new world order that we are inching into. But in this age, there's another people in the land who under their God will be the final go voice to the final age. We are the bride to here in this age to prove to Satan that we are not going to, to fall. So this is the, the Laodicean age. There is a blackout in this age. When the bride goes, it's going to be chaos. It's going to be spasms of earthquakes. It's going to be nuclear destruction. As Isaiah predicted about the blackout, that there shall come a day. He, say, he says um, in Isaiah, Behold, gross darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But to us, arise and shine for thy light has come. We are living this time when there is Satan eaten. But praise the Lord, there is a message of the age that has come. A prophetic message, a message of restoration to restore us back. Because in every age, God raised the star, a messenger. But this is the age of restoration where everything that was stolen from the church, the true power of God, the mysteries of God, and the, the anointing and the same results and the same powers as it was in the book of Acts, we have the same thing restored. What the Pamoem locust, caterpillar, Kenkawem has eaten, what the Jezebelism um, and the Balamism and Nicolaitism has eaten is restored again. This is the age where God says, I will restore all the years, even in your life, whatever you have lost as we are closing now, whatever you have lost in your life, God can restore. This is the age of restoration. We are back to sonship. We are back to dominion. What the, when the worms came and ate the bark, they ate the leaves, fellowship, they ate the protection of the tree, they ate the life of the tree, they ate the fruits of the tree, but they shall be another Ephesian. The power of God will be seen again, moving like never before. As it was in the days of Paul, as it was, there's a total restoration. We are now in the bright age. So brothers and sisters, for you to understand these edges one by one, just follow, I preached a message on each edge and go and read this book of church edges. It's going to show you the unfolding mystery of God. This is one of the great books that we have in the series book. They will give you depths as a Christian. I was enjoying um, my bookmarks here. They are all written. Uh, the other one is Theatira. The other one is Laodicea. The other one is Ephesus. The other one is uh, Pegamos. The other one is Satis. The other one is Philadelphia. The other one is Minor. It's the seven churches. Now, let me close with a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the scriptures. We thank you for the unfolding of prophets in this time. We have gone through Revelation chapter 1 and Revelation chapter 2 and 3 today. We have compressed a lot of things together. But Father, may you anoint your people with thyself to search these mysteries and to understand. May you bless, Lord Father, our search in the book of Revelation as on Sunday we shall be taking Revelation chapter 4. Father, may we enjoy these mysteries of our time because these divinely revealed mystery truths will literally turn the hearts of the children to the fathers. Bless the hearers, Lord Father, as there is a blessing in this word, Lord Father. I pray that, Father, you heal the sick and deliver the captives and answer all our needs. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you as we end our service today. Till we meet again, remember, tomorrow we have Pastor Maduka on uh, the 11th commandment of entrepreneurs. All businessmen, all the Christians who want to overcome poverty, come and learn the principles. And um, on Sunday evening, we have Christian Kids Inspirations also at 6 p.m., Sister Pula will be having the Christian Kids Inspirations, interesting stuff there. And also, remember to follow each edge as we have preached it. Now I was running and summarizing, but I preached each edge in the actual sites. God bless you. Till we meet again. Amen.